Today, I want to tell you an American story. I want to tell you the story of a young American soldier in Iraq. The soldier was born in Crescent, Oklahoma, to a Welsh mother and to a US Navy father. His parents fell in love. His father was stationed at the US military base in Wales. The soldier showed early promise as a boy, winning top prizes at science fairs three years in a row. He believed in the truth, and like all of us, he hated hypocrisy. He believed in liberty and the right for all of us to pursue it and happiness. He believed in the values that founded an independent United States. He believed in Madison, he believed in Jefferson, and he believed in Payne. Like many teenagers, he was unsure what to do with his life, but he knew he wanted to defend his country, and he knew he wanted to learn about the world. He entered the US military and, like his father, trained as an intelligence analyst. In late 2009, age 21, he was deployed to Iraq. There, it is alleged, he saw a US military that did not often follow the rule of law, and in fact, engaged in murder and supported political corruption. It is alleged it was there in Baghdad in 2010 that he gave to WikiLeaks, he gave to me, and it is alleged he gave to the world details that exposed the torture of Iraqis, the murder of journalists, and the detailed records of over 120,000 civilian killings in Iraq and in Afghanistan. He is also alleged to have given WikiLeaks 251,000 US diplomatic cables, which then went on to help trigger the Arab Spring. This young soldier's name is Bradley Manning. Allegedly betrayed by an informer, he was then imprisoned in Baghdad imprisoned in Kuwait and imprisoned in Virginia, where he was kept for nine months in isolation and subject to severe abuse. The UN Special Rapporteur for Torture, Juan Mendez, investigated and formally found against the United States. Hillary Clinton's spokesman resigned. Bradley Manning, science fair all-star, soldier and patriot, was degraded, abused, and psychologically tortured by his own government. He was charged with a death penalty offence. These things happened to him as the US government tried to break him, to force him to testify against WikiLeaks and me. As of today, Bradley Manning has been detained without trial for 856 days. The legal maximum in the US military is 120 days. It is his administration that boasts on his campaign website of criminalizing more speech than all previous presidents combined. I am reminded of the phrase, the audacity of hope. Who can say that the president of the United States is not audacious? Was it not audacity for the United States government to take credit for the last two years of progress? Was it not audacious for him to say on Tuesday the United States supported the forces of change in the Arab Spring? Tunisian history did not begin in December 2010, and Mohamed Bouazizi did not set himself on fire so Barack Obama could be re-elected. His death was an emblem of the despair he had to endure under the Ben Ali regime. The world knew after reading WikiLeaks publications that Ben Ali and its government had for long years enjoyed the indifference, if not the support, of the United States in full knowledge of its excesses and its crimes. So it must come as a surprise to Tunisians that the United States supported the forces of change in their country. And it must come as a surprise to the Egyptian teenagers who washed American tear gas out of their eyes that the US administration supported change in Egypt. It must come as a surprise to those who heard Hillary Clinton insist that Mubarak's regime was stable, 
And when it was clear to everyone that it was not, it must come as a surprise that the US backed its hated intelligence chief, Omar Suleiman, who we proved the US knew was a torturer to take the realm. It must come as a surprise to all those Egyptians who heard Vice President Joseph Biden declare that Hosni Mubarak was a Democrat and that Julian Assange was a high-tech terrorist. It is disrespectful to the dead and to the incarcerated of Bahrain's uprising to claim that the United States supported the forces for change. That is indeed audacity. Who can say that it is not audacious that the president, concerned to appear to look leaderly, looks back on this change, the people's change, and tries to call it his own? But we can take heart here too, because it means that the White House has seen that this progress is inevitable. In this season of progress, the president has seen which way the wind is blowing. And he must now pretend that it's his administration who made it blow. We agree when President Obama said yesterday that people can resolve their differences peacefully. We, can, we agree that diplomacy can take the place of war. And we agree that this is an interdependent world that all of us have a stake in. We agree that freedom and self-determination are not merely American or Western values, but universal values. And we agree with the president when he says that we must speak honestly if we are serious about these ideals. But fine words languish without commensurate action. President Obama spoke out strongly in favor of the freedom of expression. Expression. Those in power, he said, have to resist the temptation to crack down on dissent. It is time for President Obama to do the right thing and join the forces of change, not in fine words, but in fine deeds.